In the previous session, we trained a model without keeping track of how well it's doing on a validation set. Let's pick up where we left off and modify our code from the previous session to keep track of validation accuracy during training. I added this line of code here so that we won't get a lot of messages in the terminal. You can find the code on my GitHub profile at the link in the description. All right, let's start with creating a helper function for the data pipeline since both training and validation sets will go through pretty much the same pipeline. Let's copy from here to here and move all the data set processing into this function. The training and validation pipes will be a little different, so let's create a variable for that. We won't need to shuffle and repeat the data for the validation set. Every time we run validation, we'll make a full single pass over the data set. We're not going to repeat anything. So we can put this into this code block. Let's find where we load the data and move it into our data layer. We won't need to feed the data tensor to this function anymore also. Let's move it here. And then create the data pipeline for the training set. I'm just going to copy this here to call the pipeline function. And this is going to input the data train tensor. And then we're going to do the same thing for the validation set. The only difference will be that we're going to use the validation data tensor and then we're going to set is train to false. I'm also setting the batch size to one for convenience. You can use a larger batch size if you want, but you either need to make sure that the number of samples in the validation set is divisible by the batch size or handle the last batch in some way. We'll also change the iterator so that we can switch back and forth between the training and validation sets. We'll need to define the two operations to reinitialize this iterator every time we need to switch between the data sets. The first one here will initialize the data set using the training set. So every time we call this initialize operation train, the data set will switch to the training mode. Then we're going to do the same thing for the validation set. We're going to create this initializer with the validation set. We also need to return these so that we can call them from the training function in the main body of the training function. Okay, let's scroll down to our main function and see what we need to change. The data layer has changed. It doesn't have any arguments anymore, so let's remove the argument and let's copy this here. And then move the iterator here. It also returns the new ops that we have created. Let's go up and copy also those here. We're going to use these to switch back and forth between the training and validation sets. The rest of the training graph looks fine, so we'll leave them as is because we haven't made any changes on those. Okay, uh, let's train the model for 10 epochs which will be 60,000 samples divided by 32, which is the batch size, which is 1875 times 10. So let's log and validate every time we finish one full pass over the data set. So these are going to be also 1875. We should call this iterator initializer to set our data set mode to training. Now let's write the code for the validation part. We'll first switch the iterator to the validation set. Then we'll compute the validation accuracy. We'll iterate over the samples in the validation set in a while loop until we reach the end of the data set. When we hit the end of the dataset, TensorFlow throws an out-of-range error, so that's how we know that we have reached the end of the dataset. That's when we exit this loop. And before we do, we need to switch back to the training set. 
Now we can calculate and accumulate the accuracy over every batch. Then we can divide this by the number of iterations to find the average accuracy, just like we did for the streaming accuracy before. Now we can print this to the terminal to keep track of the validation accuracy. We can also write this information into a log file, or better yet, a TensorFlow log file, but we'll get to that later. So I'll just format this like I did earlier by feeding the number of iterations and the validation accuracy. All right, we're ready to run this. One thing you might notice here is that the validation accuracy is actually greater than the streaming accuracy, which is computed over the training set. So it's unusual to have a higher validation accuracy than the training accuracy. But in this example, these two are not directly comparable because they're not computed using the same model. The first streaming accuracy, for example, is accumulated over the iterations 1 through 1875, while the model was still being trained, whereas the validation accuracy is computed at the end of those iterations, when the training is paused. So the streaming accuracy we have here is just a proxy for training accuracy, but it's not exactly the same thing. It seems that our model has reached 98% accuracy on the validation set already, this is a very easy data set though, so it's not really impressive. That's all for today. I hope you liked it. In the next video, we'll see how to train deeper models, how to regularize them, and how to visualize them in TensorBoard. Subscribe not to miss new videos. And as always, thanks for watching, stay tuned, and see you next time.